Hello and welcome to World War II and more. Today we're going to be discussing rationing in the United States during the 1940s. In the early 1940s, the United States sent hundreds of thousands of supplies to the United Kingdom, and after the United States entered the Second World War in 1941, hundreds of more items would be used to support not only US troops but other allied countries as well. The first rationing came only a week after the attack on Pearl Harbor in December of 1941. It was in January of 1942 when tires were rationed and could no longer be purchased for personal vehicles. In February of 1942, personal vehicles could also no longer be purchased, as all the vehicle factories switched to making tanks and other vehicles for the military. In May of 1942, gasoline also started to be rationed. That same month, the first food item, sugar, was rationed. Then later in 1942, coffee was also rationed. In March of 1943, items such as meats, fats, cheese, canned milk, and canned fish were all rationed. Later on, items such as shoes and clothing would even come to be rationed. Throughout the war, newspapers, radio stations, and magazines all shared tips on how to ration and stretch out food. The United States also started the Victory Garden Campaign. This was a campaign to encourage American citizens to make their own gardens to grow fruits and vegetables. The United States launched a massive propaganda campaign to give Americans tips on how they could help the war effort. Some of these tips included canning your own vegetables, recycling, carpooling to save gas, making your own garden, and even supplementing and using less of items such as meat and sugar. Rationing was something that most Americans accepted as a must in order to help the soldiers get the food and supplies they needed and the United States did everything they could to help citizens understand why rationing was necessary. This was something else that was heavily put in magazines and newspapers. Ration books first appeared in May of 1942. This first book, nicknamed the Sugar Book, was something very new and confusing for the American citizens. The British had already been rationing for some time, so the United States designed the rationing program similar to the United Kingdom's. Over 5,000 ration boards, mostly operated by volunteers, issued every citizen their ration books and helped them to better understand how they worked. Items such as sugar was rationed depending on how many members you had in your household. In each book there were different types of stamps, some had drawings of airplanes, tanks, and guns, others had drawings of wheat, and some were colored. Some stamps had different numbers and letters on them. A certain amount of stamps could be used from one date to another date, then the next section of stamps would be used. Every store and merchant were required to have a ration board that displayed all of the items and the number and type of ration stamps that were required for certain items. Each type of stamp could be used for different items, such as red stamps could be used for meat, or let's say you wanted to buy a can of peas, you may need six tank stamps. Ration stamps were used to ensure everyone got what they needed and everyone got a fair share. Every member of the household got a ration book. To get a ration book, the family member would go to a ration board and get a ration book assigned to them with their name and address on it. The United States government did absolutely everything they could to get citizens to understand that they should never sell or trade ration stamps, and they should never pay over the listed price amount for food items. The OPA, or the Office of Price Administration, was in charge of issuing and maintaining the stamp price amount for each item. Whenever the amount of stamps needed for certain items changed, the OPA would notify all stores and ensure all ration boards in those stores were changed to display the proper amount of stamps required for each item. Some items, such as fresh vegetables, were not rationed and were widely available to purchase without ration stamps. Gas was also rationed and special gas stamps were needed to purchase gas, but due to the amount of fuel needed for the war effort, gas was scarcely available. By the time the war ended in 1945, most of the rationing restrictions had been lifted. In fact, the only item after 1945 to still be rationed was sugar, but in June of 1947, it was no longer rationed either. 
However, some countries like the United Kingdom had to keep rationing through the 1940s. The last food rationing in England was ended in 1954, almost nine years after the end of the Second World War. If you would like to learn a little bit more about rationing in the United States, check out the original rationing video from the 1940s on our YouTube page. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, make sure to leave us a comment. Also, be sure to check us out on Instagram, link in the description. Again, thanks for watching, and remember to always love history.